Welcome listeners to Astronomy Daily, your go-to source for the latest news and updates in the fascinating world of space and astronomy. I'm your host, Anna, and today we have an exciting lineup of news stories to discuss. We'll kick things off with an intriguing study that challenges our assumptions about the rarity of intelligent alien life. Then we'll shift our focus to Scotland, where a rocket engine test at the Saxavord spaceport led to an unexpected explosion. But don't worry, no one was injured. In more uplifting news, SpaceX has successfully launched 22 Starlink satellites into orbit using a new first stage booster, marking another milestone in their mission to expand global internet coverage. Lastly, we'll delve into the mysterious Omega Centauri cluster, where recent findings dispute the existence of a mid-sized black hole, pointing instead to a horde of smaller ones. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the universe together. Let's dive into our first story of the day, which tackles one of humanity's most pressing questions. Are we alone in the universe? Astronomers David Kipping from Columbia University and Garrett Lewis from the University of Sydney have taken a fresh look at the famous Drake equation, applying probabilistic logic to provide new insights. Developed in the 1960s by Frank Drake, this equation has long been a cornerstone in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, known as SETI. Kipping and Lewis utilize a probability distribution initially introduced by biologist J. B.S. Haldane back in 1932. Imagine a bunch of Earth-like exoplanets with similar conditions. Their study suggests that life would either be present on nearly all of them or none of them at all. This can be visualized as a U-shaped graph, with the two extremes, no planets with life or nearly all planets teeming with life, appearing at the prongs of the U. The middle ground, where half the planets have life, is far less likely according to this logic. Let's break down the Drake equation. It is written as n equals sign r asterisk x fp x n x f l x phi x f c x l. Each term represents a variable. r asterisk is the star formation rate. fp is the fraction of stars that have planets. ni is the number of potentially habitable planets. f l is the fraction of those planets where life evolves. phi is the fraction that develop intelligent life. f c is the fraction with communicative life, and l is the average lifetime of those civilizations. Astronomers have nailed down the star formation rate and the fraction of stars with planets quite well. Almost every star has some planets orbiting it, but the number of potentially habitable planets is still somewhat of a mystery, though researchers are constantly learning more thanks to new missions and sophisticated telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope. Here's where Kipping and Lewis's approach simplifies things. They suggest focusing on just two main components— the birth and death rates of what they term extraterrestrial technological instantiations, or ETI. This simplification avoids the issues with defining terms like intelligence and civilization, which can be somewhat nebulous. By concentrating on the rate at which these technological entities emerge and how long they last, they propose a steady-state Drake equation, assuming a balance between the birth and death rates over time. One fascinating outcome of their study is the suggestion that the galaxy could still be bustling with life, but we just haven't discovered it yet. The reason? The occupation fraction, a measure of how many planets might be inhabited. For intelligent life to be common, this fraction needs to be close to one. But our observations indicate it's probably closer to 0.5 or lower, meaning there are relatively few inhabited planets. Now you might think this sounds pessimistic, but Kipping and Lewis are far from advocating giving up on SETI. In fact, their equation implies that a crowded universe is just as possible under certain conditions. Maybe intelligent life doesn't travel star to star or build massive structures, or perhaps they're just too distant for us to detect at the moment. The research also speculates that even if technological life did emerge somewhere, it might vanish before we could detect it. This could be due to natural or self-inflicted extinction. Still, time is of the essence, and the universe's vast age means the window for detecting such life forms could be fleeting. The study is currently available as a preprint and is awaiting peer review by the International Journal of Astrobiology. So stay tuned as we await further developments and discussions in this fascinating field. For now, Kipping and Lewis have provided us with a thought-provoking perspective, one that keeps alive the hope and the scientific rigor of searching for our cosmic companions. Next, we shift our focus to Scotland, where an unexpected turn of events unfolded at the Saxavord spaceport. The site which became Britain's first licensed vertical rocket launch site last year, experienced a dramatic incident when a rocket engine exploded in flames during a test. 
The event, which took place in the Shetland Islands off the northern coast of Scotland, was caught on BBC footage showing a large explosion that spewed great plumes of fire and smoke into the air late on Monday. Thankfully, the site had been evacuated prior to the test and no injuries were reported. Both Saxa Vord and its German partner, Rocket Factory Augsburg, RFA, released statements shortly after the incident. Saxavord spokesman explained that the purpose of these test campaigns is to identify issues before advancing to the next stage. Meanwhile, RFA noted they were gathering information to understand what went wrong during the test, which had been one of many in the lead-up to a planned launch. The launch pad at the site was reportedly saved and secured, allowing Saxavord to continue its preparations for further tests. Despite this setback, the spaceport remains on track to potentially become the first British site to undertake a vertical satellite launch into space. This ambition is bolstered by a key safety license received from regulators in April, paving the way for a potential launch later this year. As the space industry continues to grow, with forecasts suggesting it could be worth over a trillion dollars by 2030, setbacks like these are a reminder of the challenges faced in pioneering new frontiers. Companies worldwide are gearing up to deploy thousands of internet beaming satellites, and each test, even when it goes wrong, brings invaluable lessons that contribute to the ultimate success of future missions. In more uplifting news, SpaceX has successfully launched 22 Starlink satellites into orbit, continuing their ambitious project to expand global internet coverage. At the heart of this launch was a brand new Falcon 9 first stage booster, designated B-1085. The launch took place from the Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex in Florida around 9.20 a.m. EDT. The liftoff occurred near the end of the launch window as weather conditions began to improve, demonstrating SpaceX's adaptability and precision. What makes this launch particularly notable is the debut of the new first stage booster, which successfully returned to Earth just eight minutes after takeoff. It landed smoothly on the drone ship aptly named a shortfall of gravitas in the Atlantic Ocean. This achievement marks the 80th landing on the drone ship and the 341st booster landing to date overall for SpaceX, an astonishing feat that highlights how the company continues to refine and innovate within the space travel industry. The Falcon 9 has always been a reliable workhorse for SpaceX, and the successful deployment of the Starlink satellites into orbit was confirmed less than an hour after the launch. These newly launched satellites will contribute to SpaceX's ever-growing constellation, aimed at providing high-speed internet access to underserved and remote areas around the globe. This was SpaceX's 59th launch from Florida and their 153rd global launch, demonstrating their unparalleled capability in achieving consistent, reliable results. Each of these launches represents a significant step in their mission to make the internet accessible no matter where you are on the planet, bridging the digital divide one satellite at a time. It's evident that SpaceX's focus on reusability and cost efficiency is paying off. Their first stage rockets, which were once considered disposable, are now setting industry standards with their ability to be relaunched multiple times. This not only lowers the cost of future missions, but also paves the way for more frequent and accessible space endeavors moving forward. As we continue to witness these technological marvels, it's exciting to think about what SpaceX will accomplish next. Whether it's enabling better internet access, reducing our carbon footprint by reusing rockets, or preparing for future Mars missions, the possibilities seem as vast as space itself. Our final story today revolves around the mysterious Omega Centauri Cluster, one of the Milky Way's most massive and luminous globular star clusters. Recently, a new study set out to challenge earlier findings that suggested the presence of an intermediate mass black hole at the center of the cluster. Instead, the latest research finds no substantial evidence for such a black hole. The initial claims posited that seven stars near Omega Centauri's center were moving so fast that they had to be orbiting around a black hole weighing between 8,000 250,000 times the mass of our sun. Intermediate mass black holes have long been a sought-after component in understanding the evolution of black holes, sitting between the more commonly known stellar mass black holes and the supermassive black holes found at the centers of galaxies. If they were to exist, they could fill a critical gap in our knowledge. However, the new study presents a different narrative. Astronomer Andres Benares Hernandez and his team at the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias analyzed the motion and distribution of Omega Centauri's ancient stars, utilizing data that favored a different model. Their findings suggest that a swarm of smaller black holes, each stellar mass in size, can equally explain the motion of these fast-moving stars. According to the study, 
An estimated 10,000 to 20,000 stellar mass black holes, cumulatively weighing about 200,000 to 300,000 times the mass of the sun, are scattered throughout Omega Centauri's core. The study does not completely rule out the possibility of an intermediate mass black hole. If one exists, it is significantly smaller than previously suggested, with a mass not exceeding 6,000 times that of our sun. Benares Hernandez and his team used precise pulsar timing, which allowed them to measure the velocities and accelerations of several millisecond pulsars within the cluster. This method helped them map out the mass distribution more accurately than previous studies. Opinions in the astronomical community are divided. Some astronomers argue that the data strongly supports the presence of an intermediate mass black hole, while others are convinced by the new analysis favoring a multitude of smaller black holes. For example, some point out that an intermediate mass black hole would be a more straightforward explanation for the fast-moving stars near the cluster's center. Others, like Jerry Gilmore from the University of Cambridge, believe the new study provides a more robust analysis by including various dim stellar populations known to exist in globular clusters. Resolving this mystery may require direct observational evidence, such as seeing a star orbiting an invisible mass or detecting the glow of gas falling into a black hole. Until then, the debate over what lies at the heart of Omega Centauri will likely continue. This controversy not only highlights the complexities of deciphering celestial phenomena, but also showcases the vibrant and ongoing nature of astronomical research. As our methods improve and more data becomes available, our understanding of these enigmatic clusters and the black holes they may harbor will undoubtedly evolve. For now, the hive of stellar mass black holes offers an intriguing and scientifically compelling answer to the mystery of Omega Centauri's fast-moving stars. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Astronomy Daily. I've been your host, Anna. For more space and astronomy news, visit our website at astronomydaily.io, where you can sign up for our free daily newsletter, catch up on all the latest updates, and listen to all our back episodes. You can also follow us on social media by searching for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Stay curious, keep looking up, and join us next time for more stellar insights and cosmic wonders. Until then, clear skies and happy stargazing.